Okay, so as you might have seen, WWDC 2022 was yesterday, and there were a couple of really exciting announcements from Apple. But in this video, I want to talk about the M2 MacBook Air specifically, because there are a couple of things that Apple either just straight up didn't mention or didn't really provide a lot of details on. So I thought this might be helpful for you to watch if you're thinking of buying it or upgrading from your current MacBook. So let's start with performance. So the M2 is using a second generation five nanometer technology and using this improved five nanometer technology has allowed Apple to cram 20 million transistors onto the same chip surface or about 25% more than M1. But apparently these improvements only translate to about 18% more CPU performance. And that's based on Apple's dubious industry standard benchmarks, which no one but Apple has access to. We're also getting an additional GPU core on the base model and with a larger cache. And we're getting double the memory bandwidth. And if you're a fan of the channel and you watched my M1 Pro and M1 Max comparison videos late last year, where I compare the difference between eight and 10 CPU cores or 14 and 16 GPU cores, the extra cores don't actually scale linearly. So although on paper, if you go from say eight CPU cores to 10, it might seem like a 25% increase, but when you actually look at real life workflows, so Photoshop, video editing, uh, coding, for example, it's actually much less than that. Uh, sometimes only around 10 to 15%, sometimes even nothing. Again, it really depends on the specific workflow. So basically what I'm trying to say is take what Apple is saying with a grain of salt because we don't know what benchmarks they're using to benchmark these new chips. And we also don't really know how they're gonna perform in real life workflows. It's probably not gonna be that much of a difference from the M1 chip. And this brings me to my next point, which is RAM. With M2, you now get better performance and you also get those media engines, which helps massively with video editing. But the problem here is with most video editing workflows, you're gonna need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, look, sure, you can get away with eight gigabytes for some relatively simple timelines. Like if you mostly do 1080p or a little bit of simple 4K, you're probably gonna be fine. But once you start getting into adding effects or stabilization or longer timelines, for example, uh, you really need 16 gigabytes of RAM. And this also goes for other workflows, not just video editing. So for example, if you're a developer and you're compiling code in one window and then multitasking in another one, or if you use say Photoshop or Lightroom, you very well could be bottlenecked if you choose the eight gigabyte base model option, because you won't be able to take advantage of the additional cores or improvements with the CPU and the GPU because You've only got eight gigabytes of RAM. There's only so much you can do with eight gigabytes compared to say 16 gigabytes. And typically you'll also likely want an upgraded 512 gigabyte SSD. So at this point, you might as well spend a bit more and get the 14 inch M1 Pro. And this brings me to my next point. In my opinion, I think the M1 MacBook Air is already powerful enough for 95% of people. I mean, if you really think about it, if you look at all the people out there that own an M1 MacBook Air, 95% of people just use it to browse the internet or online shopping or emails or chatting with their friends or watching movies, for example. They're not doing you know, video editing or photo editing or any of that hardcore stuff. And I think we're also rapidly approaching the point of diminishing returns. At the end of the day, how powerful do you need an entry-level Apple Silicon device to be? One thing I'll also mention here is that Apple seems to be marketing the M2 MacBook Air towards a more professional audience. But the thing is, it still doesn't output to more than one monitor. So if you guys remember back two years ago, this was a massive issue with the launch of the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. You could only output to one external monitor unless you did some weird workaround with virtual displays. I made a video on that if you wanna check that out. But even now in 2022 with the M2 MacBook Air, that same limitation is there. And that's gonna put off a lot of people because personally, I know a ton of people, specifically developers and coders, uh, that this is a deal breaker for them because they need two monitors at least with their MacBook. And you just can't do that with the M2 MacBook Air. Okay, let's talk about price as well. Now, obviously the M2 MacBook Air is now $200 more expensive than its predecessor at 1200 US dollars. Now, personally, I still think this is actually really good value for what you're getting. I mean, if you look at all the specs of the M2 MacBook Air, the screen, the speakers, the webcam, 
It's honestly an awesome package, but the problem is we are talking about a base model entry level device. So this is Apple's cheapest laptop. And that means it's marketed at people that don't have a lot of disposable income to spend on electronics. So for a pretty large target market of the MacBook Air, they're now completely priced out. This is a 20% price increase on what has traditionally always been a $1,000 laptop. And in some places, including a lot of European countries, it's not just 1,200 US dollars, it's up to 1,500 euros, which is a lot of money. In Australia, it's between 1,800 to 2,000 Australian dollars, depending on what kind of configuration you get. And that is a lot of money. And don't forget that can buy you a lot of laptop from other brands such as Dell or Microsoft. Now, there are obviously reasons for this price increase. So number one, again, you get a ton more features over the M1 MacBook Air. But secondly as well, Apple is actually having a massive supply issue with their Macs. Now, I did make a video on this a couple of weeks ago. Essentially, there's just not enough chips and not enough manufacturing going on in China right now to actually keep up with the demand. So even though the new MacBook Air is now 20% more expensive, I'd say that Apple's profit margin on this machine has been greatly reduced simply because it costs more to manufacture them now. And that brings me to my next point. There are so many other options. Now, I did think it was strange that Apple is keeping the old stuff around. So the M1 MacBook Air and also the M2 MacBook Pro chassis is exactly the same. But I think Apple is trying to kill two birds with one stone with this approach. So first of all, get rid of all of their old stock. So that chassis has been in production for years. I bet they've got tons of it lying around. They just wanna get rid of it all. And secondarily, it just makes the M2 MacBook Air look like a more enticing option. So if you actually compare the three, the M2 MacBook Air is clearly the better option right now, if you can afford it, of course. Like why on earth would you buy an M2 MacBook Pro when it has less features and it's using an old outdated chassis and design? And why would you buy an M1 MacBook Air when for just $200 more, you get a ton of really, really awesome features like MagSafe, you also get a much better screen, brand new chassis, uh, you also get the 1080p webcam and also things like spatial audio. And speaking of the M2 MacBook Pro, the M2 chip can pull a little bit more wattage than M1. So you might actually run into some increased thermal issues on the air. At least that's my theory. Because don't forget that the chassis on the new M2 Air is now also thinner and lighter than the previous version of the MacBook Air. So you probably won't see any difference between the two in just short bursts, but for those sustained things, so rendering a long video or you know compiling code over 20 minutes, for example, uh, the fan and the increased cooling capacity on the M2 MacBook Pro might really start to kick in and make a big difference compared to the M2 MacBook Air. And this might be the only selling point of the M2 MacBook Air. Because as we all know, there really was not much of a difference between the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. It was maybe about five to 10% in really, really hardcore sustained stuff. But apart from that, they were both pretty similar. So yeah, certainly a interesting WWDC this year. I definitely didn't expect the M2 MacBook Air to be launched this early. And I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how all of these new models of Mac stack up against the predecessors and also some of the competition out there because at this point in time all we've got is a couple of random graphs from apple we don't really know what they mean uh, we're fed a lot of specs from these presentations that really have no meaning so i'm looking forward to getting them into the studio testing them out like i did the previous gen of max and hopefully we'll see what kind of differences we can find but apart from that guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one